Another toxic expectation that we can have when we find a spiritual movement, especially, is that we grow up in a society that's anti-spiritual. And often as spiritual people, we feel like outsiders. Uh, we can't fit in with the religious people. We can't fit in with the atheists. We often don't fit in anywhere, really. So we are somewhat ostracized, perhaps even uh, put down or cheesed in various ways. So now we find a spiritual movement and we say, oh, this is what I've been looking for all my life. Now I'm at home. Here are the kind of people that are like me. And you expect that you should be basically treated like the prodigal son. You know the story of, that Jesus told that there was a son that had, a father had two sons. And the one had been faithful to his father and been helping with him all of his life, but the other one had traveled away and they thought he was lost. And then the prodigal son comes back and now all of a sudden the, the father celebrates this and the other son gets uh, jealous because he wasn't treated that way. So anyway, we can have this sense that now that we have found our spiritual movement, we should be treated like VIPs, very important persons. And I had this myself when I was in my first spiritual movement and in my second spiritual movement, and I've seen many other people have it. So we come into this movement and we think that uh, we are going to be treated like we are somebody special. And unfortunately, this is often fed by the culture of our spiritual movement, because most spiritual movements, they have the same pattern. They have this, uh, and it may be even expressed in the teaching, but it's certainly often in the culture, that there are very few people who have discovered our spiritual movement. The vast majority of people out there haven't discovered it. They might even look down upon us and think we are stupid or New Age cult members. Uh, but that's because they're not as advanced as we are. We have this very special movement. We have this very special guru, very high, uh, maybe the highest teaching on the planet. We have the most effective spiritual practice. And the guru is special, the teaching is special, the practice is spe special. And since there are so few people who can recognize this, obviously we must be special too. So many spiritual movements have this culture of exclusivity. Um, and so you come into this environment. And all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I must be someone special and therefore I should be treated as someone special. So now you come into this movement and all of a sudden you realize at some point, oh, that person don't, doesn't treat me as someone special. That person was unkind to me. That person ignored me. That person did me, didn't make me feel special. And I remember this myself in my first spiritual movement, but especially in my second spiritual movement, uh, coming to this point where I, I, I felt hugely disappointed that I wasn't treated like I was someone special. And I've seen it in many other people. And I had to really struggle with it. And it took me actually years to work through it. Um, and I was helped by, by what happened in my second spiritual movement, because this was a movement that actually was based on uh, teachings from the Ascended Masters. And the Ascended Masters described the path you know, in a very honest, straightforward way, that it really is a matter of overcoming your ego. And after I had struggled for years, I came to a point where I realized that this reaction, it could only come from my ego. And this was a really, really hard realization for me because it uh, you know, what, what happens is you come into a spiritual movement. It has this culture. And my second spiritual movement, even though it was based on the Senate Master teachings, it still had this culture. We have the highest spiritual teaching on the planet. Therefore, we are the most advanced spiritual seekers on the planet. So you come into this and you're almost thinking, well, I, I, I shouldn't have an ego. And so when you then come to the point where you, you realize, but I do have an ego because this expectation that I should be treated as a very important person, it can only come from the ego because this is what the ego wants. The ego wants this sense of being special, being uh, a very important person. 
This is what the ego wants, and it loves it. And, and, and that's why many people, you know, when, they, when you actually come into a movement like that that has this culture, your ego gets an enormous boost. Because now you can actually think that because I'm in the spiritual movement and I have this spiritual teaching and I'm so advanced, I don't really have an ego, or maybe the ego is just insignificant. But it's really the ego that makes you feel this way. You know, the ego loves this sense of being, being so special among the chosen people. And sooner or later, this is going to end in disappointment. And often sooner. Why? Because all of the other people in the movement, they have the same desire to be special. And so when you have a group of people who all want to be special, well, how can they all be special? They easily go into a culture of wanting to actually hold each other down. Because if somebody else is special, I'm not as special compared to them. But if I'm doing something different that other people are not doing, then I can be special. So everybody is looking for a way to be special. And of course, it's going to end up in clashes, ego clashes and ego conflicts. Uh, and, you know, sooner or later, somebody gets disappointed. They realize, oh my God, I'm not as special as I thought I was. I, I'm, I'm, nobody really respects me here. They don't really care about me. They only care about me if I fit in and, and do what I'm told. Uh, and, and again, some people struggle with it for years. They make it through it. Some people end up leaving in a huff, trying to find another spiritual movement. Some people leave the spiritual path altogether. I struggled with it for years. I struggled with it for years. And it was only because I started tuning into the Ascended Masters, and the Ascended Masters helped me see that this was ego, and that it was limiting me. And that it just had to go, because it was an unrealistic expectation. Um, I'm actually not on the spiritual path to validate my ego. I'm on the spiritual path to overcome my ego. And <clears throat> the worst thing that really could happen to me was that I had been treated as a very special person. And I actually saw this uh, both in my first and second spiritual movement and in other spiritual movements I've observed that there are some people that um, often they come in early when this organization is very small, they get a certain position. They are leaders, they are working for the organization, they are on staff for the organization, and they've been there for a long time. And they get more and more responsibility, and they get looked up to by other people, because, oh, he, he knew the guru, or he knows the guru, and he can talk to the guru. And these are the people who get most trapped in feeling special, because they, they really feel they're special, but it's still only ego. So it's, it's very difficult for them to come to see that it's ego because they have so much invested in this feeling special. But on the, uh, and if they do come to the point where they have this realization that it's ego, it's very hard for them to deal with. They, they have, have built themselves up so high, they fall much deeper. And it becomes very difficult for them to survive it psychologically and either stay in the movement or stay on the path. Many people I've, I've seen have, have just left the path altogether when they had this uh, confrontation with their own ego, so to speak. And so if you can, and I know this is difficult, I probably couldn't have done it in the early days of my path, but you can at least keep this in mind, that if you expect to be treated as a VIP, you set yourself up for disappointment because everybody else ex is expecting the same thing. Not everybody. I have met people who were genuinely very humble, and who didn't have that expectation. But many people have it that I've seen. And so by letting go of that expectation, you can say, well, it isn't really a matter of building up my ego to feel special. It's a matter of me coming to see the ego and overcoming it, because that's how I really make progress on the spiritual path.